What's up guys? If you've got 15 minutes, I can take you from total beginner to master. And today we're taking a look at V0. V0 is the best AI tool right now for app design. It creates stunning front end for your websites, apps, and landing pages. I've been using it for almost a year now and I absolutely love it. If you aren't using it, you should. And if you have used it, stick around for some tricks on how to take V0's capabilities to the next level. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's try a really simple prompt here. We're gonna ask V0 to create a Pomodoro timer app. And if you're not familiar with Pomodoro timers, it's just basically a productivity timer. You set a rest time and a work time, and you go back and forth between those two. So let's see what it comes up with. It's a pretty basic functionality. Should be able to handle this pretty quickly and easily. And boom, here we go. Okay, we got a 25 minute work time. We can reset it, start it and stop it. Let's check the settings. Okay. This works great, fantastic. Okay, so again, pretty basic, not very hard, but you know, you could you could use this thing. And let's try to make it a little bit better. There's some suggestions actually that V0 gives you when you give it a prompt. And it suggested light and dark theme, adding task tracking. And I'm gonna add one more task here. I'm gonna try to change the font to make it look a little bit better. Because sometimes, you know, V0 just picks something basic. You might wanna make it look different. I've picked a font called Space Grotesque. Again, you can just pick various fonts based on what you find online, what you think looks good. Sometimes V0 can actually copy fonts based on the uh, screenshots and websites that you give it, because it can actually go pull that information sometimes. So sometimes this can take a while. We've given it three different tasks to run at the same time. You know, V0 is great at creating front end, but when it comes to sort of implementing technical stuff on the back end, it is not very good. That's one of its limitations. But as far as creating design elements, it's pretty much unmatched right now. Okay, and we got an error, just no big deal. We can see that it still works and it changed the fonts, but I'm wondering if this light and dark mode works. And no, it doesn't. And that must be what the error is. So anytime you get an error in V0, it's pretty simple. You just click fix with V0. They give you an option right off the bat to you know, just go in there and, and fix things. And oftentimes it works on the first try. So let's see if this works. Okay. So it's going to go back. Let's see if it fixes the light and dark mode. All right. So we got a little task tracker below. That's kind of interesting. Let's see if the light dark mode works. Okay. And it's still not working. All right. So task is kind of interesting. Let's see if this works. If we add a task in front of the grocery store. All right. You can check it off. That's kind of cool. All right. Let's try one more time. See if we can fix the light and dark mode. V0 is kind of letting me down here. I have faith third time's a charm here. Okay, here we go. That looks great. Light and dark mode, okay. And you can even make it system mode, match your computer settings. Okay, one thing I wanna show you guys here, this is super cool. This was not available in the earlier versions of V0, but it's been around for several months now. And I mean, this is totally awesome. Instead of just telling the chat interface what you wanna change, you can actually use this selector tool, click on the element you wanna change and tell it specifically for that thing you just clicked on what you want to change. As you can see, I clicked on, there's a little text bubble right in the middle of that circular timer. And I wanna turn this into a button to make it easier to see. So when a user hovers over and boom, amazing. And it even made a nice little subtle design change between rest and work time, which just looks awesome. So here's the version. If you go up in the top right corner, if you don't like changes that it implements, you can go back and roll back to an earlier version. You can download code. You can tweak some of these settings. There's uh, environment variables, a knowledge base. You can fork the code into different directions. You can connect your GitHub repository. You can share the link to uh, other developers, and you can even publish this thing on Vercel to create a live landing page, either on a Vercel domain or a domain that you've bought somewhere else to make your landing page production ready. All right, so that is pretty cool, but Again, that's pretty simple, and I think we can do even more with V0. I know we can do more. So now that we have the basics down, let's give it something that's more difficult, and I guess more of V0's bread and butter, and that's making a landing page for an app. So I have this pre-built template here that I'm gonna run into V0 again. And I actually have, before I show you guys that and the output, there's a couple of websites that I've taken screenshots of, lagora.com and functionhealth.com. So these are a couple of websites I like to design as far as sort of emulating this for the app I want to design in V0. And you can actually enter the uh, URLs for the websites you want to copy or emulate. 
or use for design inspiration, or you can just take the screenshots and plug it right in. I find V0 works a lot better when you're using screenshots versus the links, but again, you can do it either way. And I've asked it to build a landing page for a voice agent. Now it's not gonna have any of that back end as far as the voice agent, but it'll have sort of the front end and the landing page that you would expect to see. And this app would be called Heirloom. I just kind of came up with that. Basically, this would be some way for a user to record their life story with an AI agent and have it transcribe it. So we'll see what it comes up with if it follows the design instructions and, and uses these two websites for, for inspiration. All right, this doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit corporate-y in terms of it's looking like sort of a generic SaaS page you might see anywhere. But you know, again, not a bad start. And, and this is what V0 does very well. Now, a couple of tips here. Number one, when you create your first version one of each landing page you work on, to make it really shine, you're gonna have to iterate it on a lot in order to get the design you like and the way, the look and feel that you're going for. Now there's a couple different tricks I wanna show you guys to level up V0's capabilities. Now V0 is not very good at image generation. It can generate images, but it's nowhere near chat GPT level. It's nowhere near Gemini level in terms of its ability to generate image assets. So you're gonna to wanna to do that elsewhere. Now you can totally do that in chat GPT or in Sora, either one of those. I, I like to do that, but here I'm gonna use something called Mid Journey. I've opened up Mid Journey here, and as you can see, I've put in these prompts to generate a, a logo for Heirloom that's minimalist, kind of plays on the infinity symbol and has these interwoven interlocking features. Every prompt you put in comes up with four different options and I've run it twice to get eight. This is the one I like the best. So let's go ahead and download it. Now with ChatGPT, with MidJourney, with whatever you use, even if you ask it to have a blank background, it won't. So you have to go into something like Photoshop or Canva, which is what I'm using here, and you'll have to remove the background in order to make it blank. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, the background is not going to always match what you want on the website. So unless you want this grayish brown color, which I do not, uh, you're going to want to remove the background. And in Canva, it's super simple. It takes about 20 seconds to do that. And then I'll just go ahead and download this image. The next thing I want to show you guys is if you're using Mid Journey and you're having trouble coming up with prompts, and again, you can do this with Sora, ChatGPT interface, when you're creating images, videos, whatever. If you want to create better prompts, you can make AI your friend in doing that. And I actually like to use Claude for a lot of these things. I will give it some inspiration, basically a website that I found, some design I found, show it to Claude and ask it to create a Mid Journey prompt to create some image assets and design elements that kind of look like that. So let's open up Claude. Ask it to create a mid-journey prompt based on this screenshot I took of seed.com, which is a probiotic website. I kind of like this green, earthy-looking background. I think it'll look nice, something like that with Heirloom. Again, I don't want to copy this directly. I just want to use this for design inspiration and come up with a mid-journey prompt to create something like it. So Claude usually gives you a couple different options. That's what it's done here. I'm going to put all three of these in mid-journey and run them and see what we get. All right, so let's go copy these from Claude and paste them one by one in mid-journey. And again, this is one of the beautiful things of using Claude or, or even ChatGPT, whatever you guys want to use to create prompts for mid-journey is mid-journey uses these tags at the end, aspect ratio, version, style. Claude has taught me a lot about that. And without it, I wouldn't really know how to get the results that I want. All right. So you can see some of these are starting to load now. Not a huge fan of all of them, but again, that's just sort of the nature of the beast with these image generation engines. It's not going to always get it on the first try. This last prompt here is kind of closer to what I want. So let's go ahead and download this from Mid Journey and go back to V0 and basically reprompt it with this new Mid Journey background and this new Mid Journey heirloom logo, which we removed the background from. Tell it to basically redesign everything from the ground up and let's see what it comes back with. All right, so this looks better, but it's missing the heirloom logo. As you can see, this didn't end up here. Let's try it again. And I'm going to make a couple more design changes here. Here. I don't like this coloring that they're using with the fonts or the black and orange look. So I'm going to ask it to make a little bit more earthy tone, minimalist, and also replace some of the fonts. Now, if you're looking at the prompt I'm entering and you're wondering what in the world are these fonts, you can kind of get design inspiration from anywhere. These are fonts that I found on websites you, and you can just see what other websites are using. If there's something you like, you can just tell V0 to implement it and it will go find that font asset and put it onto the website.
website or landing page that you're designing. So we've updated that and we'll see what it comes back with. All right, and this looks much better. The only issue is the logo we asked it to put in is still not there. So we're gonna have to fix that. With V0, you have to iterate a lot to get the result you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually reattach the heirloom logo just so it makes sure it's it's using it because I don't see it anywhere on here. So the logo is here now, but as you can see, it is super small. So we're gonna use that inspector element to click on this and make this a lot bigger. All right, so we've iterated on this a bunch of times. And as you can see, it's looking a little bit better. Now, this is also a great start, but I think we can upgrade the interface a little bit more. We can take V0 to the next level. So here's another trick I, I like to use. There's a website called 21st.dev. It's a collection of all these different community provided design elements that you can just plug and play into your website. And you can preview and look at what each of them does. I'm talking things like navigation bars, scrolling elements, background animations, things to make your user interface really sing. So this website is super Super awesome. So I'm going to go to 21st.dev. In the quick search, I'm going to look for a new navigation menu. I kind of want something a little bit more minimalist, modern, rather than just sort of the generic header that they have. You can just copy and paste this code. You go back to V0, and I'm going to have it replace the header with the code that we just pulled from 21st.dev. Okay, voila, here we go. Exactly like it looks like on 21st.dev, and now fully implemented in our website. We're making great progress, but can it be even better? Now look, as I mentioned, V0 doesn't always get it right on the first, second, or maybe even third try. You have to keep iterating on it and changing little tiny things to get what you like. I iterated on this design a lot more, and after I got to version number 44, I hit pay dirt on what I thought was a pretty slick looking landing page. Check this out. This is much more minimalist looking. It's less of that SaaS corporate vibe it had before. Again, nothing wrong with that, just totally different than what we were going for. And you can see I've even changed the logo background to have an additional element I found on 21st.dev called particles, background animation. And I've overlaid that on top of a, basically a redesign of the background we had. I went back to mid journey and asked it a few more prompts that I generated through Claude to create a different background image. And you can see this kind of green design Design element we have looks a lot slicker, cleaner, and more minimalist. And I've implemented some various UI features that I think look a little bit cleaner and better. And again, all this done with the tools I've showed you, V0, MidJourney, and 21st.dev. So now that we have this fully functional landing page, we can download the code. I showed this earlier a little bit. Now, why would you want to do that? Now, let's say you're working on an app in your code editor using VS Code or Cursor or Windsurf. It's kind of a pain to go back and forth between V0 and the code editor every time you need to change something on the front end. Now that you can just export the code, this is totally awesome and great but there's actually an even better way to make changes to the code. So now I'm actually gonna go back to V0 and I'm gonna to go to V0's documentation. V0 actually has their own model, just like Claude 4 Sonnet, that you can get an API key for and call through your favorite code editor, like in my case, I'm using Cursor. If you look at this quick start, you just have to get an API key. So I'm gonna show you how to generate that. If you click on this link here for V0 API key, I'm gonna go generate a test API key that we can then just plug into cursor. And then we're going to go into cursor and this is the cursor settings. And again, I will put the link down in the show notes for the V0 quick start here. Again, as you probably saw, you can set this up in WinServe or Klein, even ChatGPT Codex if you're using that. And the only thing you have to do is copy and paste this API key into the OpenAI section here, API section. Now, why are they doing that? Cursor doesn't have a way to call the V0 model directly. It's not currently implemented in their backend. So the only way to get around that is to call the OpenAI API <laughs> syntax, but use the V0 API key. And instead of calling OpenAI, you're going to call this URL here in the OpenAI base URL. You're going to enable this checkbox here that says override OpenAI base URL. Now, once you do that, you can actually go up to Cursor's chat window. And instead of chatting with OpenAI, when you select GPT-40 or any other OpenAI models, you're going to be calling V0. And this makes development through your code editor even faster than just downloading the zip file of your code and putting it into to cursor. Thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time.